Uh, welcome again to the Integrated Rangeland Management class today. We have a great pleasure in that a colleague of mine from, from uh, Nevada is going to tell us about a project that she's involved in on that's been remarkable recovery on a riparian system. And so that's Dr. Tamsin Stringham. She's been at the University of Nevada, Reno for about a decade, a little more than a decade this month, as I just found out. She's an endowed professor of rangeland ecology, and her PhD was from Oregon State, but all her life, she said it's her love repairing area. So Tamsin, welcome to this class, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing more about Dalton Meadow. It's nice to see you today, Karen. So I'm going to talk about the Dalton Meadow Project, which is located in the Desatoya Mountain Range in central Nevada. So if you were to get a map of Nevada out, and maybe Karen can provide that to you, the, it is located near the town of Austin, Nevada, which is approximately three hours um, east of Reno, if you were to drive on Highway 50. And um, the Desatoya Mountain Range is critical sage grouse habitat. So the Bureau of Land Management is very interested in managing meadow systems for sage grouse habitat and the upland systems also. However, if you've studied anything about sage grouse, you'll know that uh, summer, late summer brood rearing habitat, which is meadows, is the bottleneck for nest success. So one of the, the project, this upper Dalton Meadow project was focused on restoration of this meadow system, which is about a 400 acre meadow, which is very large for Nevada for the purpose of providing sage grouse late brood rearing habitat. So tell me so, about the is it is there a stream that goes through it is or is it sub irrigated how how is it a meadow so this is a what we would call a lintic system so it's spring fed there's a number of springs in this system um most of nevada's riparian is lintic we have very few running water systems which would be lodic uh, as you're looking at this first slide here and i'm going to move my mouse around and hopefully you can see that You'll, it looks like there is a, 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 a creek. So you, it looks like there's a creek running through here. And unfortunately, there now is a creek running through here at one point in time, probably before settlement, there was this surface that is uh, heavily used in this photo by both wild horses and livestock did not look like this. The, the surface used to connect from over on this side to over on this side, and there was no incision here. So this used to be a meadow surface. Oh, that's amazing. And also, we can see your, your uh, uh, pointer, so that helps a lot to kind of orient us. So that's all working well. OK. So this used to be one continuous surface across here. Through the process of um, the use of this meadow, probably both by by livestock and by historic roads that came through here. So wagon trails, we know that the wagon trail came through here. Uh, the Pony Express Trail came through here. That water was captured in the roads. It was captured in the livestock trails. There is an old homestead near this meadow that water was captured. It caused a flow path and the flow path has incised into the meadow and we now have an ephemeral channel that runs through this meadow. It captures spring runoff, it captures some of the spring, the actual spring, the Dalton Spring, that is upstream of here, runs down through this incision. This incision is about from the top up here down to here is about five feet. So it has drained a lot of the shallow groundwater in this meadow is now drained out. So it's like pulling the plug in your bathtub. So if you think of a meadow as a big bathtub that holds water, and you pull the plug in the bottom of your bathtub, it drains that water out. And that's what incisions do. They're pulling the plug in the bathtub. So one of the things we've done in this meadow when we first started, you note the date here is 2010. This photo was taken in October. Things are grazed off. You can play golf out here. They're really short. Is we installed 
where this red circle is, we, in, we installed some piezometers. So piezometers are shallow groundwater wells to monitor the depth of the groundwater in this system. So wait, there's one here, right here, and then there's another one out here, and there's another one over in here, and up in the Dal Dalton Meadow Complex, and there's actually, whoa, don't do that. There's actually one way over here. In the Dalton Meadow Complex, we have about nine, I think it's nine wells in the Dalton Meadow system. And the reason we put in, put in the wells is we're going to, as we go through the slideshow, I want you to also look at the trees. These are pinion juniper, or pinion trees primarily. There's a few juniper, but primarily a single leaf, single needle pinion back here in the background. A lot of these trees are gonna get removed and we're watching to see if the removal of pinion changes the groundwater depth because pinion drink a lot of water. You know, that's a lot of people think about that, but you and you're one of the first to really sort of measure that uh, difference. I, a lot of people see, think it happens, but now we'll know. Yeah, and so we're monitoring that. And so we have wells in to monitor the response of groundwater to tree removal, and we have wells in to monitor the response of groundwater to climate change. So ah. we also have a scan station, which is a NRCS weather station, that is now a snowtail station sitting in a neighboring watershed. Um, it's called the Porter Canyon watershed that we installed in 2010, that we have long-term data now, long-term being eight years, <laughs> if you want to look at that <laughs> long-term, on uh, snow and rain in this mountain system. So, we'll, so this is 2010, this well, is one you want to watch. So this circle is going to stay in this set of photos that we're going to look at here for a minute. So this is photo point two, October 1, 2010. So we fenced this meadow um, to control livestock and to control horses. There's currently this uh, area is over AML, so the allotted number of horses for this area is 175. They, are, they have about 525 horses yeah. in this horse management unit at this point in time. And there is no plans to gather. Mm -hmm. So the horses use the riparian areas heavily. The rancher can control cattle, but he cannot control horses. So in response to the large number of horses, the ranch asked BLM to fence this meadow off because he could not improve the meadow with just livestock management alone. So BLM finally agreed that they would fence the meadow and Nevada Department of Wildlife, BLM and the ranch fenced the meadow in September of 2015. The entire riparian uh, fencing is fences out 900 acres. So it's a big riparian pasture that he can manage grazing in. Um, so this picture, and you'll notice the trees have been removed in the background. Remember I told you to watch those trees? There's a whole bunch of trees that are gone now. This whole hillside back here has been cut. All the trees that were in the foreground right here have been removed. And I don't have a current photo to show you, but all of these trees are now gone. They were removed in this last fall. So BLM's actively removing trees. We fenced the meadow. Here's our well. And this is what this meadow looked like in August of 2016. So you're really starting to see a response in the herbaceous um, component of the meadow itself. It's not grazed down to golf course level. <laughs> So the two things that are happening back now is uh, the grazing is controlled and the trees in the uplands have been managed. That's correct. Wow. So this is the livestock will have been out. The rancher agreed to rest it for two full growing seasons. So what you're seeing in this photo is, and that means horses also have been out. So the meadows had two full years of rest in July of 2016. July of 2017, we had an above average water year. 
and this is what the meadow looked like in July of two of twenty seven of two thousand seventeen. So miraculous recovery on this meadow. Oh, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a huge difference and hardly any bare ground, just a few little um, banks that are right. still bare. So all of that hoof action that you were seeing through right through here in the 2010 photo, all of that hoof action has been covered up with, um, a lot of this is Nebraska sedge and Baltic rush through here. And then Nebraska sedge down the main channel right here. This is a really nice patch of Nebraska sedge right in here. And then this area here is starting to fill in. And is that what you'll expect to see? Like uh, that would be sort of the dominant uh, that we would expect to see on a meadow like this? If this meadow had not incised and pulled the plug in the bathtub, this entire system would be fairly wet. Back here, right over in here, there's a spring that sits right here that was actually a peat bog, but that peat bog's been degraded and the peat has um, been exposed to air. And so the peat has vaporized off with exposure to air. Um, we're starting to see, actually see there's a little bit of peat mounding starting to rebuild. And so there's hope that in 50 years, there'll be a peat bog back on this site again. But currently, yes, we would expect to have, up in this area, we're gonna have dyschampsia, tufted hair grass. Um, we're gonna have some Nebraska sedge. We'll have those type of species, a lot of Baltic rush probably due to the grazing history in here. Um, we, unfortunately, but there's a lot of iris in here due to the grazing history. I'm hoping that as the site gets wetter, that the iris will drown out and we'll have more of the desirable species in here. But we'll see what and happens. With the iris. Save the plant will also go away if, if, the, if it gets wetter. Right. So this was, this is photo point two. I'm going to show you a couple of other locations. We'll probably see this sagebrush plant go away if it continues to get wetter. Cool. So this is the lower Dalton Meadow. So this is down uh, Canyon from upper Dalton Meadow, but they're connected hydrologically. And this was just a lucky picture. So we were installing wells um, in lower Dalton Meadow. So this is one of the technicians carrying a well casing. This is our, um, we were, we, when we put in wells, we survey them in so that they're connected with a, with a groundwater survey. So the survey stations up, He's walking with the casing. I happened to take this photo on October 1, 2010. And I was going through my photo file and I found this picture because I had taken another picture of the same area in 2017 and it just happened to pair up. So you can see in the photo that again, you could play golf out here. <laughs> it's just yeah. really short. And most of the species in this photo that you're looking at here is um, dryland sedge. It's Carex deglisii. Okay. So it's very, very short. It's a little rhizomatous plant, very tolerant of grazing. And I talked to the rancher a number of times. I said, you know, this is going to be a really hard meadow to rehab. The water, because of the sod forming nature of this species, when you do get water, snow or rain, it doesn't infiltrate, it just runs off. So we would have to break this sod. And that was my perspective on what would need to happen on this particular meadow surface to improve it. And below, down, so right through here where my mouse is running, just below that there's some really serious head cuts happening in this meadow complex that are draining this meadow, same type of incision process that is happening in the upper meadow. Um, since 2010, we have gone in and we have hardened the faces the, of those head cuts with rocks to stop the head cutting process. So they're no longer moving, but they do exist. I was shocked <laughs> every time I see this picture. Absolutely. Gosh, that's incredible. So that's the same hill in the background. 
the technician would be standing right here where my mouse is. Oh my. We did nothing to this meadow other than fence it off, give it two years of rest, and have a nice rain year. And this is what happened. And we took the trees off. All the trees on this hillside right here and right here are gone. Trees on this hillside are still intact. And all of a sudden we have a lot of plants that were not apparent in 2010. There's very diverse meadow out here. And the understory in here of herbaceous cover is clover. It's not mm -hmm. Carex douglasii. There's still some of the Carex in there, right? But there looks like there's other Carexes and quite a few grasses and other things. That's right. And then underneath all of that is a layer of clover. Wow, that's going to be great. Get some nitrogen into the system. That will be great. It's just amazing. I walk out. It's just stunning. <laughs> I have yeah. no explanation for where all of this material came from. I well, that's funny. Other than it was present. It was in there somewhere, but it wasn't expressing itself. Wow, that's, that's, right. that's shocking. So it's, it's really exciting to see this happen. Very and diverse I'm sure, meadow. I'm sure the wildlife, the birds, and others must really love this meadow now. Yes, and the, wild, the sage grouse biologists are extremely happy about the response here. Um, we have birds that have GPS collars on them. And so the birds had not been using this meadow prior to 2017. Last year, they had three birds move into this meadow. So really excited. Really, really excited. So we'll see what happens. It'll be the start of something, I think. Right. So remember I referred to the um, peat bog in the upper Dalton Meadow area. So this gentleman right here is walking towards that peat bog. So that peat bog sets, or he's walking away from it, that peat bog sets right here in the background. And from that peat bog, there's a, which really no longer exists anymore, but there is a spring that comes out of the ground right there. And that water flows down the surface of the meadow this way. We don't always have surface flow. Um, this was a wet year. And so this is May 2016. The, there's water on the surface of the meadow. It was fenced the the prior September. I'm out there in May. I'm looking at the surface of the meadow. There's lots of what we call pugging of the surface. So this lumpy surface you're seeing here on the meadow, this is caused by hoof action. So it's caused by livestock or horse hooves breaking up the sod on the surface of the meadow when the meadow is wet. And what happens when you break up the surface of the meadow like this is then you can get concentrated flow because you, you've broken through the roots of the plants that hold together the surface of the meadow. And so then you can get concentrated flow across the surface. And this meadow has a slope. This photo doesn't really show that slope very well. But this, the slope of this meadow from where this gentleman's standing here down to the bottom down here is about 12%. It's a fairly steep meadow. You don't want to have concentrated flow on this meadow or you'll end up with incision into the, into the surface of the meadow and you again can end up with those deep incisions that drain the water table out of these lintic systems. So what I have circled here with this red circle is the beginning of a head cut, a small one, but the beginning of a head cut that's cutting back up this meadow this way because the flow is concentrating and it's flowing into a channel coming this way. You don't ever want to see that on a meadow. So I looked at that and I said, okay, we need to do some stabilization on this meadow surface in order to spread water. So one of the things we do in restoration of uh, lintic systems, meadow systems, is we try to spread water that's concentrated in flow paths. So this is a flow path. We want to get the water to spread out 
and to soak into the ground so the vegetation can use it. So it's not just running down the, the slope of the meadow and not going into the ground. So mm -hmm. I teach a graduate level restoration ecology, riparian ecology class, and we do a week in the field doing restoration projects. So this was our restoration site for that class. Let me get this right. If you weren't able to stabilize that head cut, it could lead to a system that get, gets washed out like that very first system you showed us, right? Right. If we didn't stabilize this, it would the head cut would move upslope and it would move down in depth into the surface of the meadow and it would move upslope and it would eventually connect into that spring and it would drain that spring. Oh, okay. So this is two of the students, graduate students in the restoration class. So we went out there in August, right when class started, and they got to plan the restoration of that flow path. So what they had to work with was some straw wattles, um, their minds. I always tell them the greatest resource they have lives between their ears. Yeah, that's right. So they got to use their gray matter. <laughs> we brought, of course, I always bring uh, surveying gear with me. So they got to survey the slope of the meadow. They got straw wattles. There's rocks on site. So you can see right here, this red circle is right at the top of that head cut that I had circled in the prior slide. So they hardened that head cut with rocks right here. And then they put some straw wattles across the meadow. These wattles were uh, 30 feet long. They put straw wattles, they put three of them in. This is the lowest one down. They put another one up here and then a, one further up to spread water as it came out of that spring and down across the surface. So this was in August of 2016 that they designed this, this structure. It took them four days to finish this whole project. So here, you can see the structure here, the rock structure. Here's the straw wattle. And here is a Nebraska sedge plant that I've circled that I want you to keep an eye on. You'll see it again in future uh, slides as we go forward. So this is, remember the students were out there in August of 16. This is October of 16. I was back out looking at it. We have really good vegetation. Cows have not been here now. Horses have not been here for a year. So we have good vegetation. We still have a pretty good bare spot here. But we have, this is dyschampsia right in here, growing right here. We have Nebraska sedge. We have some pretty nice vegetation showing up here. This is April 4th, 2017. So we had a really big winter. You can see this long straw wattle coming across here. This is me in the background walking. Here's another straw wattle right here. And there's one right in here coming across. And that spring is right up here. It's right in here. And you can see how much water is coming across this meadow. There's a lot of water coming. And here's that rock structure the students put in at the head cut. And then here's a rock check dam that they also installed down here. But we have a lot of water. And I was out here going, well, I don't know. There's a lot of water. <laughs> we'll see what happens. It looks like it's got a flow for sure. Yeah, it, you know, it was slowing it down, but we still had water coming down this flow path. So at that time, I was thinking we probably needed to come down in this area and put in a couple more check dam type structures, maybe some more straw wattles down here. But overall, they were staying in place. They weren't moving. So I came back in July of, of that year, and this is what it looked like. Wow. Yeah. Vegetation's amazing. Yeah, it sure is. So the rocks are right here. The sedge plant I had circled in the earlier photo is right here. And that big dirt spot is right here. It's a rock mass that's covering up dirt. Is it a, an animal 
Uh, I can't really tell. But so what came in right? This is colonizer. So these are like um, Veronica. Oh, okay. Is in here. Little colonizer species. There's some soft rush in here. But we're starting to get, um, there's also, let's see, what's the common name? Water, it's Alapacurus. Um, it's the water, it's not meadow foxtail, it's a water foxtail. Okay. Aquatilus, Alapacurus aquatilus. Okay. Coming in here. And um, those will be slowly replaced by your more perennial vegetation. But they're the first least, ones we see when. Yeah, seeds, at least they covered up the soil though, and they're starting to add yeah. some organic matter back. So. Yeah, they they're the first ones we see when bare spots start to repair. Is those what we call colonizer species? So those have come in, um, and then the having the Nebraska sedge in here, they'll start to root colonize. They'll spread through here. So we're happy with that very happy with how this rock structure held. I don't think I have a picture in here, but what was amazing to me was the straw wattles, by the time I got out here in July, we had a hard time finding them. They had caught so much sediment coming off of the meadow that they were buried in sediment, totally oh. buried in sediment. And vegetation had grown over the top of them. What's good so that you had them then? <laughs> they had become part of the surface of the meadow. So they had done their job. They did what they were put in to do. So, so now our challenge is to manage this. So what, what do you think it will, you have, have you been out there this spring yet? No. Yeah, well, how is there is snow still sitting on this right now. Okay. Well, that will be really interesting to see. Right. So the, um, this year, so it's been rested, we're going into 18, so this year the rancher can graze. And so I'm working with him to design a grazing program for his livestock on this meadow. So currently, there is no off-site water in this system. So there's, if, he, if he opens the gate and allows livestock access to this meadow, they're gonna go to the springs. And I honestly think that will not work well. So we've talked to BLM and to the Nevada uh, Department of Wildlife about providing funding. And NRCS is actually, even though this is public lands, NRCS has said that they will assist with the cost of providing some um, off-site off water tanks that they can pump from the springs. So we're talking about doing that, putting in an off-site tank away from the um, springs. There's two big springs in this meadow. And then um, doing a rotation grazing to where one year he comes in in the fall and one year he comes through in the spring. I'm more concerned about the spring grazing than the fall grazing, but the way he uses his permit, he will have to have some access every other year in the spring. So we're just going to have to monitor and see how that works out. Why are you more concerned about the spring grazing? The surface of the meadow is really wet in the spring. And so I'm concerned about the hoof action on the surface of the meadow and the damage that livestock hooves will do on the repairing surface out here. So we'll see. Um, He's a good manager, he will watch it. If he thinks, he tells me if he thinks the cattle are causing damage to the surface, he'll just move them out and shut the gate. And he'll just, it'll just become a fall pasture for him. So that's kind of where it's at. And we've been at this now for eight years. So he is a very patient human being and we will provide him data and he will manage with data. This ranch is Smith Creek Ranch, and they have won a National Conservation Award with the Bureau of Land Management, so I think they're there for the long haul. And they are also one of the ranches that was just um, awarded the opportunity to be one of the outcome-based grazing ranches. 
with BLM. So I'm sure that this project will be included in that outcome-based grazing monitoring uh, data set. So we're looking forward to a number of years of collaboration with them. And we will see what happens with this particular meadow in that larger outcome-based gra grazing project. Well, it's certainly amazing. And uh, I guess we'll be back with you in about five years and see what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and, and I assume the water table is coming up, so you'll be measuring that also? We're just now starting to analyze the years of water table data we have because BLM's been removing trees on a, they remove more trees every single year. And so they've removed enough trees now that we can really get an understanding of the impact of tree treatment versus the noise of climate, annual climate variability. So um, this year, we will take a good hard look at water table data and see if we can sort out the difference between annual variation and climate and tree treatment. And I will report back on that. Okay, well, we'll stay tuned. But thank you so much for bringing this to us. It's a pretty remarkable system and, and what you've done is great. And it's cool that you had your class involved too. That's really neat. Yeah, I like to have students do hands-on work and that wasn't the only project they did. Maybe someday I'll share some of the other projects that we worked on that week. So. Well, th this is all great. Any, any parting comments for us, Tamsin? Um, I would just say go forth and do good things. The world is wonderful. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Karen. Have a great day.